Okay, got a couple of new things. Well, I'm just gonna unbox this right here. I just received this in the mail. Um, if it's what I think it is. the FIO or FIO K9 Pro ESS version. So let's take a that. Definitely brand new. Uh, I got it from Apos Audio. And I, I will say that, man, these guys ship fast. I ordered this literally three days ago. So there's the warning. No, this is about voltage. Tell me to choose 120 if I'm in these countries or whatever. And here's the quick start guide. There she is. Wow, this thing is beautiful. Man, this is a heavy son of a gun. Okay, so that's got the gold knob, so definitely the ESS version. This is a XLR plug, which I will be using XLR. Wow, this thing is this thing is weighty. Um, so box here. I'm guessing this has a. Sorry if you guys can hear those. Uh, well, I guess it's not sorry. It's pretty nice. I got a bunch of. I got the door open here, so there's a bunch of birds out there chirping away. Power cord. Oh, there we go. So that's kind of cool. So what they did was they gave a little um, sticker that you could. Here, I'll show you. So you see these these right here. If I'm right, yeah. So this little sticker goes on the outside of that, so you can see what they are, in case you want to be able to read that. And they give you two of them. Oh, look, so that's kind of cool. So they give you, well, I think, you know what? I think we can switch lenses so I can get you guys um, a little closer look at this stuff, okay? So give me one sec. Um, switch out lenses so I can get a, that review. I just want you guys to see this. It's kind of cool. So they give you these stickers. These are little masks. Uh, can you see that okay? Yeah, there we go. So what they're doing there, there's a colored one and a black and white one. <laughs> and they fit right over these switches here. This allow you to, if you don't have these memorized. Now I can see it on there. It's actually written on there but I think it's very hard to read. I even have my reading glasses on and it's like, it's very faint. That's probably why they include these. They probably had some, they probably saw it after production and went, wow, that's kind of hard to see. So let's give them something to, uh... I'm gonna stick this one on just to see what it looks like. Well, that doesn't look bad. I was thinking it looked cheesy, like a sticker sticker, but let's see if you can uh, see that there. It doesn't look too bad. It doesn't look bad at all, actually. It looks from sitting here on my desk. I can barely see that, but I can easily read this now. Okay, let's just quick add in. Uh, comes with the Bluetooth antenna, which screws right on there. allows you to do that. Also, well, it came with a, a cap here. I think this is for to block the power selector. 
That's kind of cool. And it came with rubber feet. So I'm going to put these on both sides here. This is how I'll have it. I'll have it sitting like this for testing. And then later when I, I probably move it to maybe a little table in the house or something for relaxed sitting and listening. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, just wanted to show that. It also comes with a USB cable, an extra fuse. That's pretty cool. You don't see that much nowadays. Um, and it came with a 3.5 to quarter inch adapter. I, you know what? Because I test stuff now, I've got like 50 of these things in a box, so I don't really need any more, but I guess it's cool. You know, they send that out. All right, that's it. That's all the stuff. This review is going to be about the uh, FIO K9 Pro ESS Dual Deck. I've got the HD800S here. Uh, one of my favorite headphones, probably my favorite headphone, depending on the amp I'm paired to. I have it here with these because this is special together, like crazy special. Um, let's put that aside for a second. Here's the, the amp. I've got this little case under it, so it kind of stands up. Um, that's the front face to it. And I put the sticker on. You saw from the unboxing, I took the sticker out and put that on so I could see a little better what each one of these does when it's on my desk. Uh, it has this very nice knob here with this kind of gold ring around the outside of it. Interesting, right? Uh, makes it look a little bit, you know, flashy and high end. It's kind of cool. Um, XLR headphone jack, balanced 4.4 and 3.5. I've used all three and uh, of course, balance typically has more juice coming out of it. So it's something that, um, you know, some people believe it gets better sound. I don't know if that's always the case or not. I've been using 3.5 with a lot of stuff, including, um, well, actually, this is the 4.4, but I used 3.5 with, with the Rode and a couple other headphones and more than enough power to drive it. Um, there's a ton of specs you can get from them on how much power it has and the output, and there's some videos about it already. I'm not going to go too much into that. Here it is with the Bluetooth antenna attached. It has a USB in, which I how I've been listening to it here at my desk. Um, also has an optical, a coaxial, uh, and it also has a uh, balanced um, out left and right XLRs as well as in and out RCAs. So you can you compare it with another amp and just use the DAC from this. Um, this thing is heavy. It is it is really solidly built. I put these rubber feet on. It comes with six of them. I used four. Right here is this was actually open when I got it, and I comes with this plug and I put it on there. This is the voltage selector. It was already correctly selected. For where I'm at, uh, 110, 115 volts. Um, it says on the bottom there, ESS, desktop DAC and headphone amplifier, made in China, blah, blah, blah. Um, open slots here for cooling on both sides. Um, this thing is very warm as I hold it in my hand. It's been on for, for over a week on my desk. And um, it, it's super warm. And in fact... Just being on and not being used, it gets very warm. And when you start using it, it gets even warmer. Be aware of that. So you can see here, I've got my RME on top of the uh, um, the Drop 789. And that's usually my go-to. This is a fantastic pairing. The sound quality is excellent. Uh, I've never been disappointed with that pairing. Um, but I can say for sure, this is now my favorite, for sure. This is heads above that and, I, and I'll go into detail on that but that stays very cool generally when I'm listening to it whereas this thing gets super hot this thing not super hot I, I don't want to you're not going to cook an egg on it but it's definitely very warm I wouldn't put another I would like I wouldn't put the RME on top of here because this heat then is going to be flowing up into that and I it, it might be too much right so I, I keep it sitting separate by itself. I think that's probably the way you should do it if you get it. It comes with a stand so that you can put it up on its side, which then lifts this up like this, which is kind of cool, you know, to save space on your desktop. Um, and I, I'm not using it because I like it flat like this. I, I, I bump my desk too much. I'm a little bit too clumsy, and I know I'd bump it and knock this thing over. So um, I leave it down like that and works great. Um, the only thing that you see from the front of this when it's on, let me see if I can get power cable to it. There we go. We'll, we'll turn it on. Um, 
there's a little light comes on here, tells you which where your selection is, uh, um, Bluetooth, USB, optical, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then the ring around the knob lights up. Um, and in generally what's sitting there, you can see, I, I think you can probably see, let's see if we can hold it up a little bit better. You can see it's changing colors. It's going from blue to green, purple, red, yellowish, blue. Yeah, so it keeps on changing. It's an RGB um, color ring behind that. And that, what it does is it looks pretty. <laughs> I mean, that's when it's just sitting there like that. That's what it does. It just looks pretty. It just keeps on. And you could turn that on or off. Um, but what it does is when you've got it hooked up to uh, a source and you're listening to music um, for 48 kilohertz and below, it's blue for above 48 kilohertz. It's yellow. Uh, MQA is purple. DSD is green. Um, likewise, when you connect to Bluetooth, it'll tell you your... Um, codec that you're using, uh, SBC would be blue. And I'll put a little blurb in the video somewhere in here um, that'll show you that. Uh, AAC is green, LDAC is white, a a APTX HD is yellow, APTX TPX LL is purple, APTX adaptive is green. So it changes based on that. Um, I honestly don't even pay attention, right? For me, um, I, you know, at 48 kilohertz and below or above, I mean, that's perfect. That's flat quality and, and it's fantastic. I don't have any problems with it. So, um, sound quality. I, I, I'm truly blown away by the way this sounds. Paid $8.99 and I got this from Apos Audio. I've bought quite a few things for them lately and I've had really good response and I've emailed them and asked them some questions because they don't know me. They know my channel because they've sent me some things to test. Um, but they don't know when I purchase, I always purchase from my personal accounts and I, I use my, my real name. So they don't know what I'm buying. Right. But I got this thing like in just a few days, it came very quickly. Shipping was free. Yeah, I, and I, I like dealing with Apos. They've been a really good company to deal with so far. No problems at all. Um, okay, sound quality. Let's get on to that. Um, this uses the dual ESS DAC in, in it rather than the other version, which was, the, I think it's the AKM 4499. Yeah, I think that's what it was. Um, and I, I've got other devices that use the AKM DACs, and I, I like them just fine. Uh, they're very clean and very very sterile, you know, in a way. This this guy with those ESS ones, and I want to say this is probably the first ESS DAC I've listened to. And um, it, it has a, a beautiful sound to it. It's When I first heard it, it's kind of warm, a little bit warm, in the sense that things feel like the notes don't feel sharp. They feel like they have a softer edge to them, um, like in, in cymbals and in... Um, some female vocals, uh, guitar picking, that kind of stuff. It it sounds very clear and very clean, but it has this kind of soft edge to it. And I thought at first, okay, well, can I hear the detail then? So what I did was I I basically um, had a song playing and I had it coming through both the RME and the Drop uh, 789 and uh, also playing through here too. And... Um, that way I could kind of go back and forth. And what I found was that the exact same detail I could hear in the 789, I could hear here. There was no loss in detail whatsoever. But this did something to the music that I haven't heard yet. At least I haven't had that experience yet. And others may have already had this with other really high-end amps. But I didn't expect it at this price point, under $1,000. The there's There's like this detailed texture inside of each sound from each instrument and vocal that you can hear that allows you to feel like you're in the music. Uh, I, I want to use the right words here because I, I don't want to hype this like that, you know, and tell you this is the best thing you're going to buy or find ever as far as headphone amps. I, I, I don't know that. With my experience and the stuff I've listened to, and I've, I've listened to quite a bit by now, this is the best I've heard so far far better than the RME. And and for if someone comes along and says, 
Well, you can't really tell the difference. It's just so slight. It's that audiophile stuff. You know, they want that umph little degree of extra sound out of there. It's not like that at all. I heard a distinct, there's a distinct difference between this setup here and this. Um, the army is fantastic. I have, I love that thing. I use it. I still use it all the time in the drop. No, I mean, I, I use it all the time, but, but this now is all I want to listen to when I, when I'm listening for pleasure. It's just like, so now with the HD 800 S with this headphone, cause I tried the full cow clears, uh, the roads, the legias or Liga, whatever you want to call it. Uh, the HD six fifties. Uh, so a, a lot of different stuff. It was fantastic on everything, by the way, everything. But something about this and the uh, 800S together was just just blew me away. Um, the realism of instruments and vocals was so uh, stark and so like startling almost that compared to everything else I've listened to that I I. I just couldn't stop. I was going through albums and songs and just listening to things and just letting it play because I, I forgot I was even worried about a review. I just enjoyed it so much. Inside of, okay, a good example would be that Dakar El Pared from The Truth About Charlie. I talk about that one all the time because I use it for the detail piece and the timbre and that kind of stuff. When I started listening to that on this, I, I forgot it all to listen to deal. I had to go back and listen to it again because I never heard it sound that good as it did on this combination right here. Um, her vocals had this texture to it I'd never heard before. I want to say never, but it was just this emotional connection I could make with it that made me want to listen. I, I, I listened to it a couple of times in a row because I, I just loved it so much. But the detail of the water, when I say that this thing pulled out details, it's like it's as if it could take the note or the sound that was being played and find extra detail inside of it and present it in a way that it was clear and separated. I could tell there was water hitting, you know, rain coming down into a puddle. I could never, I've never heard it with the clarity that I heard it with this. Like, it's almost like I could feel that water was coming down around me. It's like I was in the rain standing in the puddle right next to it. That's what it was like. And I've never heard that before with, with anything else I've listened to. Um, and I've listened to quite a few things. The I even put IEMs into this to see how how it worked. And it, it worked fantastic. I, I used my current favorites, my the um, Canera Nana 2.0 is my current favorite. Um, and I listened to that on here and it sounded fantastic. I And I always say that you can never beat IEMs because, you know, they're in your ear and all this they have all the multiple drivers and all the, a lot of other reasons. And typically that is true for me. Typically I cannot beat an IEM. This was the first time I'd had the experience where I beat the sound quality, the IEM. And it could be what I was playing. I don't know. No, I played it on here, so it doesn't matter. It's not that. This had this texture and soundscape. Oh my God. I don't want to use crazy audiophile words and, and turn you off with that stuff, but there was a, there was, I keep coming back to texture because it felt like everything had this texture I hadn't heard before. And, you know, let's go to uh, maybe something else that's not recorded as well. Like I had some old Miles Davis, Miles Davis stuff I listened to and the recording is good, but it's not the best, you know? And even with that, I just felt like I was there, like sitting in a jazz club, listening to him. I mean, it was, that's how it felt to me when I was listening with this setup. Um, HD 650 sounded fantastic as well. Of course, this is tuned a little bit better. The bass is, I think, a little bit better than the HD 650 or more present than it is on these. But this sounded so realistic. And the detail that came through was like something I hadn't really heard before. It was it was really stunning to me. You know, I heard I've heard this this file canine pro has been on the hype train. A lot of reviewers have been hyping this thing and talking about it. And, you know, some when I hear other people talking about stuff and hyping it, I, I do want to check it out. It makes me interested. I want to find out, are they full of crap or are they telling the truth? And a lot of times, you know, like some headphones I've reviewed recently, it was they were just hyping it to make money. It was they were total crap. And I don't, and, and I don't like that. It's very dishonest when people do that, because um, I know that you guys are, are watching these reviews to try and figure out, should you spend your money on something or not? Right. So, I you know, we should be honest with you. And so I wondered about this device. I'm like, for $8.99, you know, could it really be that much better than 
than everything else I've heard and things I've heard there. Look at this RME is now about eleven, twelve hundred dollars. I think I paid almost fifteen hundred for this thing. The drop when I bought it, I paid I think four eighty nine or something for it. So together we're talking two thousand dollars in this original combo. Now it's cheaper, but you know because it's a little bit older. So I mean that's double the price of this. Could this really be that much better at, at less than half the price? Less than half, eight ninety nine, right? And I, and it is substantially better, substantially better. Yet, yeah, sure, the RME has more features, you DSP and all sorts of controls on that. But um, but sound wise, if this was a black box as it is, that did nothing else and I couldn't control the sound at all, I mean, there was no control over it whatsoever, then, um, you know, that would that would really suck, right? Um, I, honestly, I'd still take it over the army without all those features. But the thing with it is, is that this thing also has a phone app that, you know, in, in Fio's tradition, which I like the file phone apps. I like the file, the file music player is my favorite music player. I think I've said that before, but this thing allows me to control the, um, the RGB on the indicator. Do I want it to be gradient? I can control the level of gradient. I can set it to default. I can turn it off. So there's no light on there. In fact, if I turn that right now to off, boom, it, it goes off. It's not on anymore. If I turn it to default, um, there, if I, if I click on gradient, I can then change it with this to what I want and I can leave it there. So I'll leave it on default. Um, I can, ex I can select the Bluetooth codec that I want to use. Can you see that? Okay. Yeah, there we go. I can select the Bluetooth codec. Um, I can select the, what I want, USB, optical, coax, Bluetooth line. I leave it on USB. It has, an equalizer, which I played around with and works really well. And in fact, when I set it to jazz and turned it on, I, I really enjoyed it. it. It was a pretty cool feature. Um, I mean, like sometimes equalizers, I, I don't know experience if you have, but like with some of the other equalizers on phones I've worked with, um, when I turned them on right away, it kind of sounded like crap and I had to play with it a lot. This one sounded good right away. Um, channel balance so you can control if there's an imbalance between left and right you can control that um, then there's a help uh, instruction guide or help manual which is not loading I don't know why I, I never use that but it has supposedly has a guide I think that they need to add that still but the fact that it has this app that you can control it with because you can control do I want to switch to Bluetooth or, or what op you know what input do I want um, that's that's pretty cool I, that's something I really like uh, so that gives me a lot more control. And again, it doesn't have all the features of the RME, but I, I would give that up, the RME and that other setup and almost everything I have for this sound quality. The, these two paired together, I'm not telling you to rush out and buy an HD 6 800S, but these two were, it's like they were made for each other. I, I swear to God, that's what it, it sounds like to me. So would I recommend this device at $899? Um Hell yeah, I would. If if you've got that kind of money, I know it's a lot of money. I know it's a lot of money. If you if you're one of those audio people like me that is willing to spend that kind of money, if they can get that incredible sound quality, that next level thing that you're looking for, for me, you know, you may hear things better. I so I haven't heard it yet, but I know somebody that has. I think it's called um, the Benchmark HP4. I know someone with that, and he's heard this. And he says, this is so close to that benchmark. And the benchmark is his end all be all. He says, I haven't heard it. He, he, he's got it. And he's told me that it's like, he was kind of explaining to me the same thing. It's like, nothing sounds as good as that. That is, that is his kind of top tier mark. Um, and he has a, a pretty expensive DAC attached to it. He said that when he listened to this, that the benchmark, um, that this was close, very close to the benchmark. He was startled and surprised at how close it is because the benchmark's twenty nine hundred dollars, um, and 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 in his opinion, it's worth every single penny that you pay that twenty nine hundred for. So, is this worth eight ninety nine? Um, yeah, I heck yeah, I, I I would recommend this without any problem. I listened to the Focal Clear right here. 
This is, sits on my desktop and I, I use this a lot. This is on my desktop all the time, the Focal Clear. And I, I love this headphone, but there's some things it doesn't do great, but most things it does extremely well. Um, the, it, it's not, in my opinion, as good as the HD 800S, but it has its own signature to it. And it sounded beautiful right away. That's the first thing I listened to it with. I was like, oh my God. And I, I this is what I was listening to with all day. And then I thought, oh, I haven't pulled my HD out because I keep it in a plastic case, like a big uh, case to protect it because I, I really like this. Um, and and they don't, I don't think they make this anymore. So, you know, it's one of those. I plugged this in to see and I was immediately blown away by the, this pairing right here. So I can't tell you how like a Suspara or a High Fine and XS or anything sounds in this. I haven't listened to those. I listened to the Focal. Both of my Focals, I listened to the HD 800S, the HD 650, um, the Rode. Um, I listened to a lot of different IEMs. I was not disappointed with anything. Everything I listened to on this, I, I, I will say this. So as far as like going between this and the RME and that setup, the higher end I got with headphones, the more I could hear the differences. So I could, the difference I heard, I couldn't hear that much of a difference between the Rode, the NT100, between these two. I could hear it, but not nearly as much as when I put on the, the 800S. This is a vast difference, a big, big difference in the sound, or I haven't heard before in, in songs that I listen to. Um, and I could go down a list of songs, except the problem is I listen to so much stuff. I can't list it all here. Um, Diana Krall, Live in Paris. Piano, it's, it, it was so realistic. The timbre was so fantastic. And I could hear details in the background. It, her voice, okay, Diana Krall, um, there's an album she came out with, I think it was recent, called This Dream of You. And it's recorded very well. And there's a couple of songs on there that when she's singing, I could hear, so between notes, as she was changing to make them sing the next note, I could hear like her tongue in the back of her mouth, that kind of sound that it makes between notes. Like when she's, you know, go out, you know, she's going up and down. I could hear this sound in like the, in her mouth, this back of her throat. I could hear it. I could, I haven't heard it on anything else. And I could hear it clearly on this. You know, and it wasn't like it was bad. It, it made it sound so much more realistic. It's like she was standing in front of me singing. That's how this combination felt to me. Um, uh, there's a, you know, I don't know if you know who Baden Powell is. Um, Baden Powell, there's a song. It's uh, he's a, a Latin artist, guitarist, I think, jazz guitarist, but in, in uh, Latin music. And there's a song he did with a couple other artists called Samba Trieste. Samba, Samba Trieste, I think that's how it's pronounced. And oh my God, it was so fantastic. I, I, my wife came out and she's like, "What are you doing?" Because I was like leaning over with the headphones against my ears, my hands on there, and I was like. I was like, you've got to hear this. And I, 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 she came over and I let her listen to it and she was blown away. I mean, it sounded like I was sitting there and Baden Powell and these other two guys that are playing. It's like I was sitting there in the middle with them, just listening to them. It was so realistic and so um, energetic. Um, or the transitions that they were going through, like he's strumming the guitar and play, he's picking the guitar very fast. And another person is playing very fast. There's a drummer playing very fast. And in some headphones, it muddies up in some combinations, but this was so clear. It's like I could hear every single instrument and I could hear every note and I could I could feel and understand in a way that I haven't before how they were playing. Like I could I could see it happening. It was crazy. I, I mean, I don't want to go hyping this too much. I know I already have, but God, I'm just I'm blown away by this thing. At this price point, it's it's stunningly good. Stunningly good. Now I've heard that the M17, which I was thinking about getting. The M17 Pro, the portable one, I've heard it sounds, it has the same DAC setup, DAC chips, and that it sounds almost exactly like this. That's what I've heard. If that's the case, I wouldn't bother with that thing because it's not really portable. It's huge, right? I would get this. Um, that, I mean, that's my, my opinion. So for me, this setup is perfect. I can, and I connected Bluetooth through my phone. So I have Rune, I run Rune and I have a Rune server. And I, I ran that through this, through the Bluetooth connection. I ran my phone through the Bluetooth connection and played music. 
and it sounded fantastic. It didn't sound as good as a wired USB connection, as good as that, but the Bluetooth sounded excellent. I could absolutely live with all Bluetooth to this, no problem at all. It sounded so good. Um, but, you know, it, it did sound better wired for sure. I haven't tested it as just a DAC yet. I haven't plugged it into something else. I think I might be buying that benchmark. Um, and it'd be really interesting to see if I plug this DAC into that benchmark, if, if it's the same, if it still has the same quality. But as a DAC amp combo, for me, this thing is, is like unbeatable. Um, yeah, it's the best I've heard for sure. So it gets 100% of my recommendation. Uh, if you want to move up and spend that kind of money on something like this, this is definitely the next level up. It sounds better than the drop with the RME and it sounds better than the RME by itself. Like hands down sounds better. Pairs beautifully with this HD800S um, by Seinhauser. Works great with everything, but pairs ex exceptionally well with that headphone. Okay, that's my review. I think I've hyped it enough. I hope this helps you. You guys have a great day.